hello, hello. Welcome. And today we are going to talk about parametric and non-parametric t-tests using R. So as usual, I have my folder created on the desktop, which you can have it in any place on your computer, provided you can fish it out easily. Um, so I have the folder right here. And in the folder includes my R script and a subfolder of data and another subfolder of plot, which we might use in our um, coding to just keep things structured, but you are not um, mandated to do the same. So here, the first thing that we want to do is to get in our data. And our data here is going to be on abundance, be abundance. And we want to create a data frame such that it records 10 um, abundances for male and 10 abundances for female. So these are the abundances that were recorded um, for the male. So we are asking R to create the data frame and for that data frame, create a column named gender and under the column, replicate male 10 times. And for that column, give it the abundance of these um, numbers we have provided. And we are doing the same for the female. So we just um, run this code to see what we get. I want us to view it before we continue. So view B dot data to see how our data is structured. Beautiful. So we have the data structured in a way that records male and the abundance. So, and it records female 10 times and for each gives it the abundance. Okay, so if you want your data to be arranged in this format, that is a code you can use to just keep your data arranged. And we want to save the data. I always do that because you don't want to go into that stress of having to write um, or read in the data, like write the code all the time to get your data. So I'll just save the data so that um, just in case you want to come back to use it again, you don't go through that. If you want to see that your data was saved, when you go into your data subfolder, you can see that the data has been saved. And let's say the next time you came to do your coding, you just want to draw the B data from the subfolder. You use the read.csv function, and then you tell R that it should fish out the data from the data subfolder you created. And you give the name for the data. So another thing we want to do is to visualize the data, to look at how our data looks like, even before we go into the statistical analysis we want to do. So the first thing we are going to do here is to run a box plot. Um, it is giving me an error here that the function ggplot, oh yes. So if you don't have the ggplot package, you would have to install it. I have it already, so I'll just call it from the library. Um, but if you don't have it, you would use the install.packages and mention the name of the package to download the package into um, your R folder. So I have the ggplot package called from the library. So now I can run my plot and I'm saying that the ggplot should consider my data as the B data and the X variable to be gender, the Y variable to be abundance, the, and it should color it by abundance, um, sorry, color it by gender. So differentiate it by gender and have us make a box plot and the theme classic removes the grid lines and just presents a very um, classic plot. 
and we don't want to get any um, legend because we are, we don't need it. So the legend will just put an inscription or like information beside the plot and describe what the variables were in our scenario. We don't need it. Um, and I'll tell you a couple of minutes why we wouldn't need it. Okay, so this is the plot that we have created. If you look at the plot, you can see that it already describes what we have on our X axis and what we have on our Y axis. So it's not important to get another legend or else it, will be, it becomes like double information on one plot. So this is how our female abundance look like and how our male abundance look like. And the T test we are running is to know if there is a significant difference between the female abundance and the male abundance that was recorded. This is not um, a failed data, it was just a presumed data. So don't worry about the results we get, uh, but it's just to let you understand the concept of the t-test and how we can run it in R. Uh, we are going to use the GG save plots um, function, the GG save function to save our plot. I have gone over the way to use a GG save function to save plots and other ways you can use to save plots. Um, so I wouldn't repeat it here, but if you want to, you can check in some of the videos I have made earlier and you would um, learn more on that. So we have our plots saved um, as a PDF. Again, when you go into your plot subfolder, you should see the plot. So this is the plot that we had. Um, it's telling us that this is the way the female abundance is generally distributed. Um, so this is the median and um, this represents an outlier. So the female has an outlier, uh, but the male doesn't. Um, that doesn't necessarily conclude to it that there is um, a significant difference in it. So we would continue running our analysis. This summary data is to help us know some of the information we can grab from our data, which includes the mean, the median, the number of um, samples that we have, the variance, the standard deviation, standard error, which you would need if you want to explain your data into more details. Um, so we run this to you. Oh, I have another error, which is saying that I need, they couldn't find a function of the um, Piper. So that is in the package deplier. Um, so I have it already. Um, so I wouldn't install it again, but I'll just call it from the library. Deploy, okay. Um, just call it from the library. Yep. So now we should be able to run this code. Yes, and it did. Um, Let's view the statuses we had on our data. Okay, so this is what it gives for the, it groups it by the gender, which is either male or female, and it gives the stats for each of them. So the female had a mean of 23.9, the male had a mean of 29.5. The median for the female was 19.5 and that of the male was 32.5. The number of occurrences for each was 1010. 10, um, and we have the variance to be 288 for the female and 137 for the male. So these are the stats that we have on the data, but we haven't run the t-test yet. Okay. Earlier, I stated um, that this, before we will run the teeth test, we would check whether it is parametric or non-parametric. So for a parametric data, it means that it follows a normal distribution. 
And for a non-parametric data, it does not follow a normal distribution. And one way that you can use to check that is by using a QQ plot. Um, so we would run this QQ plot and check it. So mostly if you see like a very distinct shape in your QQ plot, um, it could mean that it is not parametric, like it is not normal. Um, but there's, there isn't that much of a distinct shape in the plots. The plots kind of looks like it is um, like well distributed on the line. Um, there isn't that much of a distinct shape. Mostly if you see like that S shape, you know that it is non-parametric. Um, so from this plot, I can conclude that the data we have is parametric, uh, but we are going to continue. Let me save this. Um, let me save this plot here. So QQ plot. That's our QQ plot. So now we are going to use a statistical test to check whether it's parametric or non-parametric. And one of the ways you can do that in R is using the um, Shapiro.test, which simply stands for the Shapiro-Wilk test um, for normality. So we are going to choose our alpha value of 0 0.05, which is our significance level. So um, beyond or above this, sorry, above or below this, we can either state that our data is normally distributed or not. So we run this on our banners and let's see the results we have. So we have a p-value of 0 0.689. So the p-value we had is greater than our alpha, um, which means that we would have to fail to reject the null hypothesis and hence conclude um, and conclude that conclude that data is parametric. So when your p value is greater than the alpha, you fail to reject the null hypothesis and it means the data is parametric because in the null hypothesis, we see that it, we see that the data is normally distributed, which means that it's it's parametric and non normally distributed means that it is non parametric. Another test you can run is the Anderson Darling normality test. And you do that using the install packages um, notice that this particular function can be found um, in the notice package. Here we just call it from the library and then run it again. You should get a similar result. Yeah. So here to the p value is greater than 0, um, 0 0.05. The first one was 0 0.689, running it with a Shapiro Wilk, and this gave us 0 0.615, 6151. So another test that you would like to do is to test for equal variance. And one common test is the Levine's test, which can be found in the car package in R. Here we are going to set our alpha value at 0 0.05. The null hypothesis is that the data have equal variance and the alternate hypothesis is that the data do not have equal variance. And here is the inputs for the Levine's test function. In our B data, we wanted to take the abundance and um, the gender to test for equal variance. Our p-value is 0 0.5144, and this is greater than the alpha value of 0 0.05. So we will fail to reject the null 
and conclude that the data have equal variance. Now we can start with our main t-test. And to perform a parametric t-test, um, let me add a t here, you use the function t-test and you call in the variable, so the x and the y variable. Um, usually you do, you do start with a y. Um, so it's y, this sign, and then the x variable. And we are telling R that it should take the information of these from the data named B data. And our alternative is two-sided because we said it should just give us whether it's significantly different or not. Other alternate hypothesis you can give is that the alternate hypothesis is um, maybe like another alternate hypothesis you can give. Sorry, I'm getting all of this. Yeah, but is that U1 is greater than U2 or vice versa. So those are the other um, alternate hypothesis and null hypothesis you can state. But in our scenario, we just want to keep it simple. Um, I can pro provide another lecture of that. Um, but this one, you just say whether it is significantly different or not. So we are giving it two-sided, which means I would just want to say whether it's significantly different or not. And we had the equal variance to be true from our Levine's test. And the paired is false. So a paired um, data is mostly when the first sample that you have, um, the results is dependent on the second samples that you collected. So let's say you collected um, light intensity for trees on day one, or you injected a group of students with a particular vaccine, and then you tested their blood levels before and after the vaccine. That is a paired data. The before and after data is sort of dependent on the other. So that you can consider a paired data. But for ours, it is not a paired data. The male of the, the abundance of the male um, here, we don't consider it to affect the abundance of the female um, in our scenario. So just in case after running the parametric test using the Shapiro-Wilk and the Anderson-Darling test, and we realized that our data was non-parametric, we would have used the will cost test. So I just want to include it here um, if you are going to be running your data and you jump into a non-parametric test and you have to do a t-test on that, you'd have to use the will cost test. And it basically runs in the same um, format. So you would choose the alternative, you choose the either it's a paired or not paired, it's a variance or um, if it has equal variance or not. And yeah, you do that as well. So I wouldn't run this necessarily because our data is um, parametric. And so even if you get a result from this, which you would get, but it wouldn't be a very accurate result. So you want to use what is um, right for each. So you use a will cost test for a non-parametric t-test and you use the usual t-test function for a parametric um, t-test. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If you have questions, you can put them below in the comment section and I'll do my best to respond to all of it. Um, have a great time and see you all next time.